We're now joined on the sports mix by the head coach of Hedgesville football, Matt Faircloth. Coach Faircloth, your team falls to Musselman last week in a tough one by a final score of 26 to 12. What were your takeaways from that game? Well, I think, you know, our kids played hard, played with effort, played with energy. Um, I thought defensively, you know, we, we did pretty well against the run. Uh, did really well against the pass when they try to see guys behind us. Uh, offensively, there was a lot of drives. That, you know, we, we worked ourselves all the way down to the three yard line. Just didn't finish. Um, you know, we didn't didn't really uh, punch it through when we needed to as far as finishing drives and, and executing as far as that goes. So, I mean, it's strides that we've taken in the last couple weeks of you know putting it all together. And I mean. That was probably three quarters of a game and not four quarters yet. Coach, unfortunately, you know, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I know that you guys forced a lot of turnovers and, like you said, played some pretty good uh, defense throughout the game. So uh, how is that a step moving forward for your team, especially after some tough weeks in terms of points allowed defensively? Yeah, uh, we had, uh, you know, we had an interception, uh, like two fumbles, um, you know, we gave our offense a chance on short fields a couple times. So, I mean, for us, moving forward, you know, we, we saw some things we liked. Uh, guys flew around with fast, physical, um, a lot less thinking and just doing their job. And so going forward, I think we, you know, we found a mixture of what we like and, uh, you know, we're going to stick to it the rest of the way. Kind of mentioned the offensive struggles here during this uh losing streak what, what is it going to take to kind of get the offense out of this uh funk that they've kind of found themselves in here in these past five games uh, i think the big thing is taking what's available uh you know not overthinking it we had you know they were playing 10 12 yards off and you know we weren't taking what was available to us on the on the hot route or the quick routes and uh, executing in the run game, I uh, thought we ran the ball really, really well early on. Uh, then we sort of got away from it. Uh, it's just what happens when you fall behind the sticks and then you fall behind in the score. So for us, we got to come out. We got to execute early, take what they give us, um, and keep handing the ball to Dalton Harper. Dalton Harper. I mean, I think Dalton averaged right around four, four point five yards a carry uh, Friday night going into halftime. So for us, it's you know, feeding him the ball but not getting behind the sticks and still taking what's available. You, you kind of mentioned just taking what they give you there, and I'm trying to think of how, how to blend this together. Is that more so to be able to effectively do that need to be a change in play calling maybe at the start of things when you see those cases uh becoming a trend or is it the decision making from the kids on the field during uh that play or is it kind of a mix of both no i think at the end of the day it's you know every run has an rpo built into it uh you know you gotta you know before pre-snap you got a pre-snap read you got a post-snap read uh and we talked to the line about it the other day as well uh you know when I when the offensive line gets to the line, they need to understand the box that's in front of them. Uh, all the plays, you know, except for maybe a three or four, and you know we 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 owned up to that. But most of that is is just coming out and taking what's what you see, what's in front of you. Um, you know, they were giving us a six man box. We liked it early on, but when you fall behind the sticks, you got to start throwing the ball. And when you fall behind in the score, you got to start throwing the ball. So for us, it's it's execution on what is in front of us. Looking back on that game, are you starting to see maybe a better understanding of that from your team, or do you think that's still going to maybe take a few games before they are fully, you know, every play uh, pick it up on all the keys? Yeah, I think it. I mean, we saw some really good things uh, in some of those drives on Friday night. Where, I mean, we we had drives where we really took advantage of what they were giving us. We drove the ball down uh, inside the inside the five a couple times, just couldn't finish it. Um, and that drive right there before halftime uh, where we hit Brett Patterson on a, on a pass, that was a really good drive. And that was a drive that was way to end the, end the half, but we got to continue doing those things throughout the, throughout the game. Um, but going forward, I mean, I think we saw some things we really liked. Uh, you know, we got back into the spread a little more because uh, I think our kids 
feel comfortable there because when we got into our power offense, defensive lines just really started cutting our O-linemen, um, not really playing defense, just cutting our O-linemen and clogging everything up in the middle. Coach Faircloth, your team started off 2-0, and but it's kind of spiraled downhill now with these five straight losses. It can be deflating uh, at times for these kids, given this situation. How do you make sure and what are some of the things that you guys are doing in practice maybe to keep things positive, upbeat, and competitive overall to keep the mission forward of winning ball games. I've said it a million times. I'm not ever worried about the morale or the, the, the mindset of our kids because the one thing out here is, you know, we, we make sure our kids understand that, you know, we're, we're going to try to do the best we can for each other, set, put them in positions to set them up for success. Um, and at the end of the day, they know we, we care about them and, that's why we, we don't have that problem of kids not coming to practice when, you know, you're on a five-game losing streak or, you know, kids trying to find ways out of things. Our kids, every kid was here yesterday. Every kid showed up to practice ready to rock and roll, and, and our kids are always going to compete. Coach, <clears throat> excuse me, Morgantown this week, Coach, a team that's 5-3 uh, and three so far this year. What are you seeing from them on film? <laughs> Big, strong, uh, Punch in the mouth type of team. Uh, got a, two quarterbacks uh, that can really throw and run. Uh, running back that's you know pretty pretty good, pretty athletic. Uh, and then they they got the two wing backs that that really get after you running the ball and blocking. So uh, they're going to be a juggernaut for our defense to stop. Um, and then on the defensive side, they're really big up front, uh, really athletic in the uh, secondary. They make you play their game which is keeping everything in front. They rally, they tackle, they pursue the football. So, I mean, it's a typical Coach Beiser team, and it's going, it's going to be a tough test for us. With that being said, the past few weeks on your side of things, we've kind of talked about changes being made. Uh, are, are there more to come here this week as you guys get ready for Morgantown? If so, what are some of those changes potentially? No, I think, you know, we found some things we like Friday night, and that's where we're going to stay. That's going to be our identity. Uh, we're going to keep trying to develop kids, and, you know, we got a lot of young kids playing in key roles, and right now they're they're le- pretty much learning varsity experience uh, on the go. Uh, so for us, we're going to keep coaching, keep teaching, uh, and our kids will keep responding. Coach, you've been able to add some of these tough non-conference games um throughout the state, Morgantown being one of them, Wheeling Park uh, last year, I believe you guys faced off against them. So uh, how, as the program's kind of developed, how do you think these challenging games, obviously playing the EPACs, you're already playing some tough in-conference games, but uh, the, the next two weeks especially, you got Morgantown and then Herbert Hoover, who's a smaller school, but still a, a really good team at 7-0. and So uh, adding these challenges to the schedule, what do you think it does for the program? You got to face adversity every single night in the EPEC. So, for us, I'm not I'm not ever going to, you know, go out and try to find, you know, a game that guarantees us a win or this, that, or the other. You know, when we started winning games a couple of years ago, you know, before that everybody wanted to play us, and then we started winning some games, and now everybody doesn't jump on the on the train to play you. So, and for us, it's. We're going to play a tough schedule because we feel that, you know, if, if it was 21 teams still in quad A, whether we were 5-5, five 3-7, and 4-6, five, and seven, four and six, we were going to earn our way in. And, you know, this year everybody gets in. But, you know, I feel like we've, we've earned that strength of schedule and, and, and the points we do have just for the simple fact that we're not afraid to play anybody. All right, Coach Faircloth, any other thoughts about this week's matchup against Morgantown? If not, we'll get to the fun question. No, that's it. All right. Fun question for this week. If uh, you were a musician or a rapper, I guess, to be more specific to get you in the uh, proper mindset for this one, what would your stage name or rap name be? (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) That's a tough one. 
I don't know. I've always been a big ZZ Top fan, so maybe best dressed man. I don't know. That's that's tough. All right. Can you think of any for other coaches? We also put out that challenge. Oh, look, if I can't think of a good one for myself, <laughs> I surely can't think of anyone for anybody else. Just wanted to see. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I like the question, though. I like it. Appreciate it. So I, I guess next week, if you finally think of one, let us know. Will do. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck. Yeah. All right. All right.